In this video, we're going to be taking a look at Reillusion's hand-to-hand -hand combat animation pack. We will take a broad overview of what it is, how I'm using it, and go over some tips and tricks, and hopefully, by the end, you'll be able to know if this will be an asset for your current or future projects. So, let's jump right into it. When I saw this pack came out, I immediately knew that I was going to get it for my projects. I like making short films, and this pack aligns nicely with my subject matter. So I knew I needed this pack, but for full transparency, Reillusion did provide it to me for review. That said, these are my honest opinions that have not been influenced in any way. First, if you don't already know, the hand-to-hand -hand combat pack is a collection of 68 motion-captured animations designed for fights in games or films. These animations are broken down into four subcategories. There's sparring, evade and counterattack, takedowns and throws, as well as win or lose. Each animation is paired with its corresponding reactionary animation, and these combine as short choreographed sequences of high action stunts that are helpful for any close quarter hand-to-hand -hand combat situations. There are several things that I like about this pack. As I mentioned, each action is paired with a reaction. If you've ever looked for any interactive animations, in particular fighting animations, say from Mixamo or even Rococo Studio, you'll know how difficult it can be to find matching animations. You'll typically find an awesome attack animation, but then there's no corresponding defensive animation. If you do find one, odds are that they're not timed up properly, and you'll have to spend a lot of time modifying the animations to match them up. Since these animations are paired up, it makes it very easy to put the characters in visually stunning fight scenarios. And that brings me to my next point, that these are extremely easy to work with. Typically, all I need to do is add my characters to the scene, and then add the corresponding animations to my characters. I then position the secondary character to line up with the first contact point of the animation. I then drag the transform point for that secondary character back to the beginning, and just like that, my characters are interacting wonderfully. Most of the time, that's all I need to do. The only time I've seen this become an issue is if there's a drastic height difference between my characters. It seems these animations were recorded with actors of relatively the same height, so if there is a height difference in your characters, the animations might not connect perfectly. But that's an easy fix using iClone 8's animation layers, or even easier with Reillusion's reach target system. You can dial in the animations quickly with these tools and be on your way. I will put links in the description below where you can find more information on how to use these wonderful features. Overall, these animations just look great. Recorded with professional stunt actors, I feel like a lot of care went into providing us with a wide variety of animations that can be quickly applied and give us good looking choreographed sequences in no time. I also like how the fights are not completely one-sided in these animations. Most of the sequences, both characters are engaged in the fight. They both throw punches or kicks, showing they both have high stakes in this fight. This makes it a lot more compelling as a story piece as it gives you the tension as to who's going to end up with the upper hand. Of course, nothing is perfect. The drawbacks of these animations for me are that they're not all that stringable. What I mean by that is that I find it somewhat challenging to flow from one fight sequence to the next to create longer choreographed sequences. The main culprit of this is that the animations are quite realistic. In a real fight, in order to break the flow of combat, opponents need to generate distance from one another, and each circumstance will vary how much distance is required and where those characters end up. Since each sequence typically starts with the characters closer to one another and then end with each character further away from one another in different positions, it naturally creates a challenge to bring those characters back within proximity of one another in order to more naturally initiate the next fight sequence without the distraction of sliding the characters back towards one another. Quite honestly, I don't think Reillusion could have done anything about this without compromising the performances. The easiest solution to this problem that I found is to cut from one camera angle to another, omitting the repositioning of the characters. Or you could just focus the camera in on one of the characters while the second is repositioned. So having taken a look at some of the pros and cons, I wanted to provide you some tips on getting the most out of this pack. First, 
I would recommend that you add expressions to your characters. It's amazing how much more your characters come to life and how much more the performances come to life just with these simple facial expressions. I use the face key tool to quickly add changes over my timeline, but if you want to use my trick on how to cut between the character's transitions by focusing in on one of the character's expressions, I would recommend taking a look at the Digital Souls pack from Reillusion. Second, without getting into too much depth on the choice of lenses and camera angles, if you want to accentuate the action, I personally like to use wide angle lenses, either a 35 millimeter or a 24 millimeter lens, and bring the camera physically in closer to my characters. This will place the viewer closer to the action, but will also provide a wider field of view in order to get more of your character's movements in the scene. However, wider angle lenses can distort your characters, so keep that in mind. Additionally, Having lower sweeping camera angles can also bring a more dynamic feel to your scene. In the end, keep your camera moving and avoid static shots for more visual interest. Third, keep an eye out for your animation speed. These animations were recorded with a lot of speed and intensity, which is a good thing, but it can also work against you. Sometimes it's more important to slow down the speed of the motions in order for the viewer to visually comprehend what's going on. The best fight sequences tell a story in and of themselves, and sometimes we need to slow things down in order to communicate that story and emotion to our audience. So when using these animations, be mindful that you may want to slow them down a bit to help communicate the motions better to the viewer. This can be done directly in iClone 8, or if you export them out to programs like Blender, kind of like I do, you'll be able to do that in various ways with your favorite 3D software. Overall, I love this pack. The paired animations are easy to work with, they're high quality, they're visually stunning, and they give you a lot of variety. I foresee myself using this time and time again, and I would highly recommend it to anyone who is in need of close quarter combat animations. While this is best for bare fists, you can tweak the animations a little bit to incorporate small weapons like knives or daggers. Even though it is priced at the higher end of Reillusion's content at about $149, I think it's worth even more than that. Especially if you have ever dealt with the frustration of having to match up existing fighting animations that were not made for one another. Links to this pack will be in the description below. Additionally, if you like the look of some of the characters in this video, the ones that I've created under my developer name, Libertas Armory, are available on Reillusion's content store, where you can pick them up for use in your own projects. Hopefully this video has been helpful, and if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the comment section below. This is Eric from Libertas Video, and we'll see you in the next one.